Hello, and welcome to One Voice Live, where we talk about One Voice, what it is, and how it fits into our world of singing. I am joined today by One Voice creator, Michael Maresca, and we're going to be diving into a conversation we love to have, which is, what is the right way to sing? And we're going to talk about the significance of this conversation in our One Voice world. So, Michael, do you remember when this idea of what is the right way to sing started coming up for you? Well... Uh, when I talk about it, when I, when I teach about it, I, I, I talk about when I was 18. And I had this great desire to teach the right way because oh, who wouldn't, right? Now, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, you're a budding voice teacher. And what you want to do is you want to teach people the right way to sing and uh, obviously not the wrong way. And so it really started for me, the actual questioning of it really came when I was around 18, 18 years old. That's when it started off, and I didn't really know, I didn't know what that was, and so it became a bit of a search to understand what the right way was to sing, which I think is obviously a word that we use all the time these days. Do you remember the first time you had the conversation in a masterclass setting where you presented the idea to One Voice students? Yeah, that was, uh, it was awesome, and I felt really fortunate at that point to have had some training in in facilitating conversation, which is really awesome. And I remember having the conversation and as I was talking, I was offering the idea, I said, so what is the right way to sing? And, you know, as you know, in teaching master classes, you have people who are saying all the things. We all start spilling off, you know, the list of uh, items like, you know, you gotta support, you gotta uh, sing from the diaphragm, uh, you have to sing into your mask and lift your soft palate, you know, all those things became um, a really interesting discussion and it was so rich. We began with talking about what is the right way and we offer that idea and then what happens is people list off all those things and after talking about all those things then people start disagreeing which is really interesting because I I say this thing, I'm not sure if you did this in your master classes or not, but I say this thing where I say so now let's take all the things that you said and let's let's chisel them onto a stone and put it in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And in that way, anyone who ever wants to learn how to sing the right way can make a pilgrimage to this one stone that will tell <laughs> us the right way to sing. And then everyone's like, I'm like, cool. So you guys all feel great about that. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then suddenly, um, then suddenly you have like one or two people who are like brave enough to be like, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> and... It's so awesome because then then the real rich stuff ensues about, you know, what is the right way? Is there a right way? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think my very first time I did that, I was absolutely terrified that I wouldn't be able to navigate the conversation mm-hmm. um, oh my gosh. because, you know, we raise it to a bit of a higher level when we start talking about art and what is art and what is, what is the right way to uh, create art. Yeah, fascinating, fascinating discussion. And for a lot of people, of course, it gets quite heated, quite, quite heated. Yeah, and some people love it and some people really don't like it. And I want to talk about that at some point too. So to play devil's advocate, how could singing healthily not be the right way to sing? I think the word in and of itself is such a fascinating word. The idea of singing right, as it were, is such a fascinating notion because really the word right you know uh, as you experience sometimes people uh, will arrive at this place in a in a master class everyone has their own right way to sing there's a right way for everyone and uh, I say if that's true then um, let me ask you all a question I say what I say well how many ways can you plug a three-pronged plug into a three-pronged plug outlet and one waits for a second and they say well one I say well that's really interesting so then by its very nature how many ways does the word right offer us, right? One, right? And what's interesting about that is the word right is really a singular direction word. And it's used for judgment. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it bad? It's a very confusing word in the English language in terms of how I think we use it because it's really a judgment word. Uh, You're right. You're wrong, right? And it's Mm -hmm. often very opinionated and very subjective. And so because it's so subjective and opinionated, it is used for all kinds of things for judgment, like I want to be healthy, so all cookies are bad, right? I need to not have so many sugar, so cookies are bad, or um, uh, salad is good, green stuff is good. So now when you go uh, out to eat or you go to your kitchen, you look and you see, where is my green? Green is good, 
uh, cookie's bad. And then you say to yourself, ah, oh, but I just, maybe I want a cookie. And the only reason you know it's bad is because you've labeled it bad. Uh, and it goes against the good, as it were. And so it's a fascinating word for judgment, and we use it for all kinds of things. That's not a good color for me. That's the wrong color for my eyes, right? Uh, it's simply because, you know, you decided that that should be the good color. Green would be a good color for you. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we also use it as a moral compass, a generic moral compass, to say, you know, this is right for me. And because it has become so subjective and a judgment tool, it found its way into singing as well. And I think that's where we have to get clarity on what is the difference. You know, you had mentioned healthy. And I think that's an important concept to chat about that people often throw in. They say, well, if you want, if you want health and strength in your voice, we're going to show you the right way to sing for only $9.95. Right? <laughs> uh, I think that's an interesting um, and unfortunate idea because the word healthy gets thrown in there. And the reality is that healthy is not a judgment tool. Um, it would be more of a factual tool. So instead of saying, this is something that is uh, right for you to do, right and healthy are two different things. Just because mm -hmm. something is healthy doesn't make it right. It just makes it healthy. And I think it's a funny add addition that we, that we add to things. And I think it's because for many people, particularly in the world of live performers, uh, singing performers, they will often get into a headspace of finding what's right for themselves so they can make quick decisions about what they're going to do. Should I yell? Should I go to this party? Let me see if it's right for me to uh, be at this party or go yell tonight or whatever it is that they're going to do. Um, stay up singing all night. Have I decided that in my world, healthy is a big goal of mine? And then what they end up doing is they say, all right, anything that, that is told to me that is healthy or I deem healthy or that gives me longevity, et cetera, is now called right. I will, synonym, I will make that synonymous with the word right. So someone says, let's go out and let's sing tonight. Let's go have some karaoke tonight. Well, if you're in the middle of a show, you're in the run or something like that, you're, you're, you're recording an album, you might say, well, that's, that's bad for me to do. That's wrong. I can't do this. It's not right for me. And that doesn't really quite make any sense because you're like, well, why, why is it wrong for you? Is it mean that it's wrong for me? And that's the immediate thing that happens is people feel judged because they say, well, is it, is it wrong for me to do it? Well, no, no, no. I, I was just saying that it's right for me. Well, if it's right for you, then in theory, there's only one way you can plug a plug into an outlet. So I want to know what you're doing. So I know that if I'm doing something, if it's wrong or not, it's a very terrible discussion because it just goes on and on and on forever. Right. Um, yeah. And so I think, I think what we could do and what I, um, you know, what we aim to do in our work is when we're sharing this with people is to strip the word right away. Cause I think it's really just, it's a, it's a, it's a word that has placed itself in the world of singing that I think is, is poorly placed. I think it really has no home here because it's so undescriptive. And so, you know, you want to sing, you want to have longevity. Well, that doesn't make it right. It just allows you to have more longevity of your voice. You know, when we, when we zoom out, we talk about art, which singing is a part of. Singing like painting, like dancing, like sculpting is all an art. So, you know, what's the right way to create an art? And what we find is that there really isn't a right way to create an art. And some people, of course, out there right now, and I'm just going to help you out out there. If you're out there and you're listening to us, you're like, oh, well, I know, Michael, but there is, you know, I, uh, I went to, you know, the Royal Academy of Art in, of painting in France. So there is a right way to hold a paintbrush, Michael. Well, it may not be a right way, I'd argue. I'd argue rather perhaps it is something that will enable longevity of, of the joints, et cetera. Uh, perhaps a little more mobility, but the art itself, there's no real, in, in, in my opinion, there's no real right way to do so. Uh, it's simply about uh, getting the art done because who are we to tell someone who has no arms that they're doing it the wrong way when they're painting uh, with using their mouth to pick up the brush or someone in a different country yelling or even hurting their voices and telling them that they're create they're, they're making sound wrong. Um, I don't think we can, you know, uh, it becomes a different discussion if you're looking for something that will give you longevity or health. That's a very different discussion. It's not about right or wrong. It's about longevity or health. Hmm. Um, yeah. What Ooh. would you say we, yeah, you went off and I loved it. Um, <laughs> what would you say we gain from avoiding the words right and wrong when it comes to singing? I think we, 
gain specificity. Mm -hmm. um, and I think specificity, specificity is very important. I think we lose track of how important being specific is. It's just like in communication, you know, hey, you want to come over and hang out? Yeah, I'd love to come over and hang out. So we get here and then like one person wanted to hang out because they wanted to play video games and the other person wanted to hang out because they wanted to talk. So the issue is, is that now because we weren't specific, now one of us is trying to get the conversation to end so that we can play the game. And the other of us is trying to have a conversation and keep the game from being played so that we can talk. And this is all simply because no specificity or lack of specificity. And so I think removing the words right and wrong force us to be specific. They force us to dig, to be clear. And, you know, it's easy to say, well, that's just the wrong way to do it. Okay, why is it the wrong way to do it? What am I, what am I missing? Why is this wrong for me to do? What's bad about it? And all these words I'm using, wrong, right, bad, they're all judgment words. So instead, if we could say, well, it's not necessarily about it being right or wrong or good or bad. The game here is about offering you more options or perhaps that this is actually a healthy way of being able to produce sound if you're looking at trying to have longevity. If you're not, it doesn't matter. What I, this doesn't matter, right? But if you are, then this matters to you. So that's an important distinction to make by, by not and or removing those words. We just gain clarity, I think, because we stop relying on something that's vague. Do you think we gain anything from using the words right and wrong, good or bad? That's a good question. I think the only time it's even really helpful is in our own journeys of uh, trying to very quickly make a decision about something that may or may not be beneficial to our outcome or our desired goal. If I have a goal of... Um, reaching the top of a mountain it would be it would be the wrong decision for me to uh ski down the mountain that would be the wrong decision right mm -hmm. if i was just gonna go i was awesome i said that wrong right um, <laughs> that would be the wrong decision because it doesn't it doesn't help me to get to the top of the mountain so in that instance i would tell myself my aim is to get to the top of the mountain anything that uh veers from that or stops me from getting there, I'm going to call wrong. And what it does is it allows me to very quickly say something and say, well, that's, that's wrong for me, right? But for everyone else, it's unhelpful. Who, this is not wrong. You want to go to the bottom of the mountain? Well, it's not wrong for you. Go to the bottom of the mountain. Okay, follow up. Yeah. So let's say I'm having voice lesson with you. I want to create a heavyweight in my middle coordination. You give me an exercise. I go to do it and I crack into lightweight. And I'm like, oh, that was wrong thoughts because that was wrong for my ultimate outcome right yes 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 and i i think i'm gonna i'm gonna rewind i'm gonna rewind and i'm gonna say i don't care about the words I, that's what i'm gonna say because I, I i really don't think they're ultimately helpful i think in terms of quick judgment for a person um if if you're clear that that is that that is just for you not to be imposed on anyone else i think fine i, I think fine uh, otherwise, I think they're mostly limiting, and I think they're unclear because of their limitations. So, yeah, in that case, what I would rather hear, and what I generally will, what I generally will adjust for someone in a session is, I will say, "Cool." They're like, "Ah, that was wrong," and I'll say, "Well, what was it? Was it wrong?" And they're like, "Well, it was a lightweight, so it was wrong." I say, "Well, let's just take the word wrong out and now say it again." Ah, dang it! I sang in a lightweight. There we go. It wasn't wrong. You're just saying a lightweight. There's nothing wrong with a lightweight. It's just lightweight. And your, your aim is to try and hit that heavyweight. So let's get the heavyweight. Um, right. So yeah, I rescind what I was saying about that because I think it's nice to say and I appreciate that. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I don't cool. care. Ha ha ha. Right and wrong? Yes. The people who love this conversation and who get totally jazzed and into it. Yeah. Yes. Why? Do they love it? And then the people who seem to recoil and crawl out of their skin, why do you think they hate it so much? What would your guess be? Of course, we can't know for sure without Yeah, happening. we can't really know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think if I were to guess what I've discovered through conversations with people about it, post the discussion of right way to sing, is that... Um, 
or rather offering that discussion of the right way, quote unquote, to say, of course, people always make the joke, which is funny, total side note. They always make the joke. They're like, one voice. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, just leave they're them like, in. what you're about to tell us. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay, just go away. Um, it's always really funny. And um, yeah, I, I think through discussions, what I found is I found that for most people, it's, it is uh, the people who really enjoy it, they're seeking clarity. And finally, they start to gain clarity, which I think is why they love it, because it's, it's so exciting to be clear about what things are. The people who don't like it and really struggle with it, uh, they're, I think at that moment, they're not interested in processing something. Processing mm -hmm. is difficult, and it takes a lot of energy, and it's work. Uh, sometimes it means rethinking what you already, quote unquote, know, and that's hard work. I think reorganizing what you know can be very hard. But I will encourage those of you out there who are listening to this, in terms of reorganizing and reframing things, it's like building endurance. You get better and better and better at reframing and reorganizing. So as you're thinking of, oh man, like, okay, I'm not thinking of the voice based on sound anymore and basing it on the coordinations, uh, these different functions of the voice that allow me to gain access to different ranges of notes. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 That's a lot to process. That's a lot to mm -hmm. process. And, uh, and I see that's often true for a lot of people out there who are curious about one voice. They're either people who are, uh, really desperate and seeking answers, or they're people who can do all the things that everyone else wants to do, except they have no idea really how they're doing them. They just do them or they, they can feel what they're doing. They just have no language for it, a clear language. And like, saying stuff like singing through their mask doesn't make sense to them, stuff like that. And so I think it's the same. I think it's someone who's hungry and is ready to process versus someone who isn't. And I think that's, that can come maybe at different times in lives or it can be For part sure. of someone's personality. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Uh, Michael, do you have any last minute thoughts on Right Way that you didn't get to talk about? Well, I'll just say this, if, if this is unclear for anyone, um, <laughs> if this was not clear in any way, I wanna be very clear that we have zero aim in the world of One Voice of trying to deliver the quote unquote right way mm -hmm. uh, of singing, that our only aim is to deliver what makes sense um, and what actually creates real effect uh, in a voice. And that's what we're interested in. So the fights about being right or wrong, don't care. Uh, if it makes sense, cool. We're, we're open. We're open and we're ready to move on with that. And we're also open and ready uh, to say that we missed the mark. I think that's that's cool. Yeah, awesome. that's all I have to say. I love that. That's great. Michael, thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. Thank you. Cool. One voice. Okay, you guys, submit your questions to questions.singonevoice.com. Next week, I will be joined by certified One Voice coach Jackson Perrin for Whoa. his One Voice Live debut. And yeah. we're going to be talking about the idea of female training female and male training male and the importance of that or lack thereof. We'll find out. Thank you guys so much. And Michael, thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys same time, same place next week, Wednesday, 1.30 CT. Thanks. Bye-bye.